Why do we love villains? Well, quite frankly, they have a lot more fun than the hero, and more often than not, are far more confident in their plans and actions. But one of the main reasons we are truly attracted to bad guys is because they are often deeper and more fascinating than the protagonist. This week I wanted to discuss a handful of concentrated tropes focusing specifically on TV villains. I have broken them down into four categories and have chosen specific characters from various TV series as my subjects. Chapter 1, The One-Hit Wonder, The Single Episode Baddie. Definition, an antagonist that appears only a single time during the run of an episodic television series. For this trope, I chose to discuss Khan Noonien Singh of Star Trek The Original Series. The legendary franchise's most infamous foe ironically only made a single appearance on the three-year run of the original series. Though he's made his bones as arguably the king du jour of Trek baddiedom in the Trek film series, whether Wrath of Khan or, spoilers ahead, the more recent Star Trek Into Darkness, this genetically engineered super tyrant made his first splash in the season one episode, Space Seed. Defrosted by the crew of the Enterprise, Khan has made a welcomed guest on the space vessel, only to soon turn the ship's historian, Lieutenant McIvers, against Kirk and company, and use his 72 other cohorts to take hold of the ship. But Khan is defeated in a climactic duel with Kirk and his obvious stunt double, and Kirk sentences him to a barren sand heap, giving him the chance to reign in hell. Khan may have only appeared one time, but he is far from your standard villain of the week that is seen on countless TV series nowadays, and even on Trek itself. He is cunning, charming, charismatic, and is one of the only nemeses closest to defeating the captain of the Enterprise. Few baddies on an episodic television series is fortunate to gain such a great talent like Ricardo Montalban to play their weekly bad guy. It makes you wonder if, had the series existed this day and age, would he be cast off so easily and not brought back in the later season? But more on that villain trope in a bit. Chapter 2 Along the Arches The Overarching Villain Definition, a villain that is used sparingly over the course of a series, and despite limited appearances, leaves a lasting impression. For this trope, I have chosen the Cigarette Smoky Man from the X-Files. Introduced as a minor background character with more cigarettes than lines of dialogue, the Smoking Man was merely a lackey whose presence was due solely to the actor playing him. William B. Davis didn't expect this extra role to go anywhere, but by season two, Gillian Anderson's real-life pregnancy forced the writers to make her disappear. As a result, the Smoky Man became Mulder's nemesis, constantly appearing in a puff of smoke at the center of almost every unsolved alien conspiracy. The Smoky Man was shrouded in mystery, and it seemed as though he was an omnipotent force, pulling all the strings with evil precision, and even occasionally using Mulder and Scully for his own personal gain. Like most overarching baddies, the Smoking Man was repeatedly killed off, only to have a dramatic return later on, and even was revealed as Mulder's true biological father, Darth Vader style. Despite only appearing in roughly 35 of the nearly 200 episodes of the series, one cannot remember the X-Files without Mulder, Scully, and that cigarette-smoking son of a bitch. Chapter 3 At Season's Length, The Season-Long Bad Guy Definition: A villain chosen specifically for a single season arc. For this trope, I have chosen Arthur Mitchell from Season 4 of Dexter. Arguably the finest hour for the long-running Showtime series, Season 4's mass popularity and accolades have as much to owe to John Lithgow as anything else. As Arthur Mitchell, Lithgow creates his most sadistic and frightening character since Blowout. At first, seemingly a hermit with a murderous pattern of killing in threes, Mitchell is soon revealed as the patriarch of a God-fearing household that he rules with an iron fist. Anxious to learn how he balances his serial killing career with a home life as a father and a husband, Dexter gives up his opportunity of killing Arthur when he was at his most vulnerable. As a result, Arthur inevitably uses his cunning to unveil Dexter's true identity in one of the show's most hair-raising moments. And even after Dexter vanquishes his foe, he learns that his wife Rita was killed by Mitchell and left in a tub of her own blood in the series' most shocking moment. Not dissimilar from Heath Ledger's Joker and Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight, Arthur Trinity Mitchell was Dexter's most brutal enemy, and his actions have left a long-lasting effect on the series, and more specifically, the title character. Chapter 4, Better the Devil You Know, the series' long antagonist. Definition, the primary villain or main antagonist of the TV series. For this trope, I have chosen two subjects, Arvin Sloan from Alias and Benjamin Linus from Lost. With Ron Rifkin's Arvin Sloan, J.J. Abrams created a deceptive and cruel supervisor that Jennifer Garner's Sidney Bristow had to constantly evade as she attempted to dismantle the worldwide terrorist organization that Sloan worked for from the inside out. 
First believing Sloane to be slim pickings compared to his masters, Sidney soon realized just how dangerous a foe Sloane can be. Assisting in the destruction of the Alliance terror cells, Sloane frees himself to pursue his lifelong obsession with philosopher Milo Rambaldi's endgame. Going to great lengths to achieve this goal, Sloan systematically takes away that which is most dear to his enemies, most notably Sydney. But like all great series-long baddies, Sloan becomes an uneasy ally, often assisting the heroes to topple larger forces of evil, a trope commonly seen in many blockbusters nowadays, it seems. And, as a way of keeping the character interesting, Sloan gets the redemption arc treatment. Meeting his illegitimate daughter Nadia and coming face to face with death turns Sloan around, and he begins taking on the role of an anti-hero. But like most villains, this is one tiger who can't change his stripes, reverting back to the dark side upon accidentally killing his daughter. Sloan returns to his dangerously dogmatic ways and tries to bring forth Rambaldi's works, but his old friend Jack puts him in the ground just as he discovered immortality. Tough break. And finally, Benjamin Linus. Introduced in a guest starring capacity, Michael Emerson's Ben was first known to us as Henry Gale, a balloonist from Minnesota, who persistently claims innocence as he is held prisoner, believed to be in league with the ominous Islander foe clan, the Others. Eventually, Ben is revealed to be their leader, and he makes it his career to put the survivors of Oceanic Flight 815 through the ultimate hell. Categorized as the master manipulator, akin to the likes of Hannibal Lecter, Ben is able to psychologically analyze his opponents like a master chess player, weeding out the weaknesses of his enemies before exploiting them to his advantage. Once the survivors, led by Jack, bring an unwanted guest to the island, Ben follows in Sloane's footsteps and becomes an ally for the survivors, and it is here where we realize that Ben actually has a heart. After his daughter Alex is brutally gunned down in front of him by the dastardly Martin Kimi, Ben begins to question his place. A once loyal servant to the island's protector, Jacob, Ben has a crisis of faith and soon begins to realize that his decisions and sacrifices were done in the name of power, something he would now gladly trade in for the life of his deceased daughter. Ben is given the chance at redemption as he helps Jack and company defeat the smoke monster in the series' final act, and even gets the chance to apologize to John Locke in the afterlife for strangling him out of jealousy. Unlike Sloane, Ben follows through with his redemption, and unlike many TV series villains, we get a fully realized and well-rounded character, as Ben completes the circle from arch-villain to tragic hero. Well, that was my podcast for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please rate, comment, and subscribe.